Hi, Jeff here with Max again today. Today we're gonna to talk about something that might seem a little overwhelming, but I've got a great little hack for you to make this simple. I'm talking about installing crown molding. So in this environment, we're working in this basement, we had some mechanical runs, we built some boxes. We only needed two, so we designed this whole shape. So I've got an elevated ceiling now in the hallway. So the way we're gonna finish it, we didn't tape it because we're gonna put crown molding from corner to corner, and close all this off. And this is really kind of simple. What we want to do is measure, of course, the inside length of this box. 67 and a quarter. Now, again, it's very similar to doing baseboards. You're gonna have tape joints. You're gonna have things moving around. Go a little bit smaller. Use shims on the backside to close up the gaps. And then you can caulk the rest to finish. You'll always have a nice finish if you caulk your gap versus trying to force things in, okay? So as soon as you start forcing things together that don't quite fit, your alignment's gonna be off. It's gonna look ugly. So leave a little extra space. It's good for you. Now, 67 and a quarter. That's one of our first measurement. I'm gonna show you how to install this. I got the cheat, cheat for you. So the material we're using today is a finger joint pine, pre-painted, very simple line. It's not colonial, it's very modern. And we're not trying to draw attention to the style of the molding, but we just wanna have that, if you can see that up at the ceiling. There's the visual that it's gonna get. Nice and simple scoop, and it dresses it up, all right? So, before I get into the cheat, we have to cut our measurement. Measure once and then read the measurement twice. <laughs> okay, watch yourself there. Pencil line, and when I'm doing this, because it has a weird shape, you know, generally you do enough work on the saw, you know where your blade's gonna cut. Just leave itself a little open. Do a first cut. Make, make as many adjustments as you need until you hit that spot bang on, okay? because you don't want to get this wrong. Now, the world of miter saws, it has the ability to fold over and cut in different directions. When you're doing a crown molding, traditionally you have to do a double compound miter. You have to adjust this table angle and the saw blade angle. There's a chart and you can use that chart to do all that. Or you can go to the store and you can get a 95% quality job as a homeowner using one of these OG cuts, okay? Simple, it's listed here, interior, exterior cuts. This is the top. You simply put that on the saw, place your material into that guide up against this here. That sets it at 45 degrees. This is the ceiling, so the, the top of this is gonna be like an inside cut. Set the saw to 45. And the same way we are cutting the length, all right? Because now this is perpendicular, and that's where the angle should start. So I can start my saw. And I can just creep along like that until I find that perfect spot. Hoop, hoop. Done. Same thing, switch to the other side. Okay. I gotta come over here, because I'm right in. And if it helps at all, you can put a little pencil mark where that corner is. When you're finished, just inspect. So you see here, that didn't go right to the corner. There's a little flat spot there. So we wanna actually put that back on the saw and just trim off a little bit of a hair. Again, make sure you're holding this nice and tight to the fence, holding the, pressing the wood tight to this guide so you get your angle, right? There we go. Now the reason this is a 90% solution is because this plastic guide isn't gonna work perfect for you, but for the average homeowner, this is going to save you a lot of time and money. This piece of wood fits, and then we didn't cut it too long. And I push it left and right, I'm plus or minus an eighth of an inch. All right, now the mistake a lot of people make is they'll stick this up here, they'll roll it around, oh, that looks good, fits perfect, they'll nail it in. But what you wanna do is take a short off-cut piece with the same cut on the other side, and put it up against the ceiling, and look at that. 
That is not how you want to do this. So what you do is you roll that piece of wood, you slide that one in. Now that's the place where you want it. Brace that one, lose that extra piece of help. Mark your line. And remember, you haven't cocked or painted yet, so this isn't gonna hurt. I'm not worried about what's going on at the other end. I'm just gonna get this end fashioned first. So I'm gonna take that down. Now, generally speaking, when I'm doing crown molding, I love to have my teenage sons help me because they're tall and they don't need a ladder. But uh, it's nice to have someone holding things in place for you. If you don't have that luxury, what we need to do, and I see this all the time, honestly. The reason I pencil mark this is so that I can put my caulking on the wall and on the ceiling in advance. I had so many years you get calls of people, oh, the, the, the crown molding's cracking, it's all falling apart. And what you find is guys cheat. They come up here, they nail it all together. Those little brad nails, they don't use an adhesive. They use a surface caulking line here to finish it all off. And they use the kind of caulking that doesn't have any elastomeric property at all, which means it doesn't expand and contract. So the wood's moving around, but the caulking isn't, and there's not enough there to bond it to the surface. So what I like to do, I like to put some caulking on the, just inside those two pencil lines. Okay. And if I put too much, that's fine. We're going to move it out of the way. We haven't painted yet anyway. Now, I'm going to place this right on that sweet spot between those two pencil lines. And then I'm going to pull out my nail gun. Generally speaking, I don't have anything to nail this to. There's no wood anywhere I'm going. So I'm going on that angle, and I'm going on that angle. That'll hold it. Okay. Now it's in place. And we've got to move a little quick here. So now I'm going to take this piece. I'm going to do the same thing in this corner as I did in the other one. And I'm going to roll this around till I find that happy spot, which is right here. And I'm going to pencil mark it as well. All right. And I'm going to open this up a little bit. Again, same tip here. Don't press too hard with your gun. Try not to make too much of a dent. All right, and then just make sure that you're staying your lines. If you go out of your lines, your next piece is gonna look ugly. Pull the caulking along the same rate that it's coming out, give or take. All right. I prefer the dry finger technique <laughs> instead of the wet. This is siliconized caulking and I don't want silicone in my system. It's not healthy for you. All right, there we go. You can see that finishes off really nicely. Note, do not use caulking to fill your nail holes. It'll shrink and it'll show something fierce. You wanna use something on here like a like a dried X product or even like a drywall compound. Something you can swipe in, leave a little bit extra there and then use a sanding sponge to take off later. When you paint this, you want that to look like the surface has never been blemished. If you use caulking, it'll shrink and dry out and then you'll have little dents everywhere. And the way the light works in the room and the way this is curved, it is gonna scream at you if someone did it themselves. So here's how we wanna do this. We wanna measure for the next piece right to the wall and behind the, the trim in the corner, okay? Over to the other wall. And if you can pick that up on the tape, it says 46 and 5 eighths. Now I know from experience that's gonna be a little bit tight, so we're gonna go 46 and a half. Just take a little bit off so that it's gonna fit nice. Again, we'll go to the saw, cut both angles in advance, and we'll come back and set it all up. Again, holding everything nice and tight. Now here's a trick I don't know if I've ever mentioned. When you're using one of these saws, always get the blade running before you go into the meat. Get your maximum RPMs up before you start cutting. You'll extend the life of your blade and it won't start burning so much. Cha-ching! We just want to make sure that we are gonna get this corner here rolled roughly in the right direction here. And then over here. 
here. We want to line this one up again. This is what I'm talking about. It's the 90% solution. All right. This is why I love this. When you're buying a wood crown molding, every one of these pieces that goes through the mill is going to be slightly different. I don't know why. <laughs> Drives you crazy. But the width, the curve, the, the thickness at the ends, the details, every single piece is just a little bit different. And it has something to do with the amount of wood it takes to cut this out. Um, it's just the way it is. So no matter how meticulous you are about lining up your corners, there's going to be a problem. So get them as close as you can, and then you're just going to have to be really good with your caulking. So here, I'm going to demonstrate my point. Here's the piece I've cut to install here. All right, and I line this up. And my line's not bad, it's close. Here's the piece we cut as our template. Much better. Still not perfect. Same saw, same tool, same corner, different piece of crown. It's never going to be perfect. <sighs> nice to go to caulking business there, eh? Now, very important, if you have a misalignment issue, you can maybe force it together a little bit by pressing that corner in and rolling it down. If that helps, like I told you earlier, there's not a lot of wood up here to be nailing into. Throw an extra couple of nails. Might be enough to help close it up a little bit tighter for you. This is where being good with your caulking gun is going to come in handy. I'm just going to clean up our excess here. I'm not sure how that looks on the camera, but to me, it looks not bad. Now, I'm going to come back again here tomorrow and check it again, because like I said, this stuff will shrink. So give it 24 hours. Come back and check it again. Don't be in a hurry to paint this. Let it dry overnight. Come back. Do another fill if you need to. But here's the rule. In construction, generally speaking, if you can see a defect from six feet away from it, then it's a defect. If you can't, then it's wonderful. So we're not really in the business of making things perfect. We're in the make business of making things look good enough from a certain distance. Call me crazy, but that is going to look fantastic from your distance. Two more coats, fill the gaps, paint it up. Beautiful. Great cheat. Saves you a ton of time. You don't have to hire a carpenter. You can crown mold in your home house and make it look absolutely gorgeous for just a few hundred bucks. Oh yeah. And if you like this video, <laughs> then subscribe to our channel. We got a lot of great things coming up. Or hit the like button. I like to know that you like it because then I know what kind of videos to give you in the future. If you're enjoying these videos, subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, but most importantly, comment on the videos by all means or a suggestion of video you'd like to see. Let us know. We'd love to be in touch.